Hello there, and welcome back to the Chaps Guide. My name is Ash, and of course, I am your host on this journey through men's style, self-development and personal grooming. And today you're joining me on a walk through the woods on my way up to my hut, just to make sure it's all in order because I've got a bit of a uh, sort of overnighter coming up, a couple of days where I'll be in the woods and I want to check everything is in order. But on my way up, I thought I would share some ch tips for chaps self-care with you. Because the reality is, many of us men, we neglect our self-care terribly. We will go through life, and particularly those of us who work in challenging physical environments, we sometimes forget that uh, hygiene and personal grooming is important. And it's not just hygiene and personal grooming. There are many other aspects to staying healthy and well in life. And this is very apparent to me, the difference between the genders. When you think about how much more women put effort into maintaining their, their poise and their fettle as they go through life. One of the obvious areas of this diversity, really, is the, the world of spas. Now, I know virtually none of my gentlemen contemporaries who would really enjoy a day at the spa, being primped and preened and uh, waxed and all these sort of things. Yet women, you know, there is a huge industry which has been built up by the female desire to enjoy that sort of experience. So it really shows how women take a much more self-interested view in self-care, whereas men perhaps don't. So I'm going to talk about some of the grooming angles, some of the sort of self-care angles, and uh, perhaps some of the more important areas as well. So we'll talk about those, but first of all, I'm going to get up to my hut, make sure everything is in order, and then we'll have a chat about Chaps self-care. There she is, hiding in the woods. My little home from home. And the little campsite where we are here. My bench of contemplation. And the hut itself. And of course, it is called Oak Lodge for a reason. We are surrounded by oak trees here. So, there we are, there's the hut. Let us get inside and see if everything's in place. There we go. So everything is looking good. My bed, we are ready and willing to spend a few days of rest in Oak Lodge. Well, chaps, my first tip for improved self-care is physical self-care is very important. That's my number one tip because, let's be honest, the body is the most important item that you will ever have control over during your lifetime. It's the vehicle that propels you through life. And it is us who makes the decision whether that vehicle, which we journey through our, our life cycle, is a Ferrari or a dump truck. We are the only people who control which one of those vehicles that we're gonna drive by various things that we do to make sure that that vehicle is suitable and working properly. And, you know, the, the things that you will do are things like diet, exercise, sleep, and other things. Diet, for instance, well, you wouldn't put diesel into a Ferrari and expect it to perform at a high level. The same goes for your human body. If you put junk food into the body, it's not gonna work so good. If you eat a balanced diet, that doesn't mean going 100% full on, and you know, being um, afraid to eat anything which is got fat or anything like that in it. No, a balance, I believe, is the best way to eat as we go through life. It makes life enjoyable because we enjoy eating. It's an important thing. But at the same time, you know, it means that our, our Ferrari will perform to the highest level standard when we need it to. Sleep is vital to the human body. I know that because when I uh, was a police officer, I used to work shifts. And there is nothing more destructive for the psyche and the body than not getting a good sleep cycle. 
you know, being unable to sleep damages your mental health, your circadian rhythms, you can't eat properly, you never feel fully rested, you don't want to take exercise, there are many impacts. So making sure that your sleep hygiene is good and you're in good order, getting the right sleep, enough hours per day, you know, never thinking you can cut corners and only take five hours sleep if in fact your body needs six or seven hours. So getting enough sleep is really important. Exercise is another key thing to getting that body working to its optimal level. Um, it doesn't matter what type of exercise I would suggest. Now some people will say, well, you know, um, you need to go out and run a marathon. Absolutely not. If for you, the only exercise that you can take is a short walk, well, that's better than nothing at all. It will do wonders for your body, your mobility, and absolutely your mental health, but more of that later. So for sure, make sure that you're taking exercise. And gentlemen, proactivity is really important in your health too. What do I mean by that? Well, not waiting for something to go wrong terribly until you go and see the doctor. Men are terrible for not going to seek the advice of a physician when they need it. So certainly when you get to my age, I'm in my, I'm 52, and uh, you know, I'm starting to think about things like prostate cancer because my father suffers with that. Both of my mother's brothers suffered with prostate cancer. So I'm conscious that I've certainly probably got a DNA marker for that running through my body. So for me, it's gonna be important to make sure I'm proactive, go and see the doctor, get the old tests done every year, make sure I'm keeping my eye on the ball, so to speak. So for you, you should do that too. Do not be afraid to go and see the doctor and get the advice you need to stay in good shape. Okay, gents, so my next tip is gonna be a lot less philosophical, and that is something as simple as good old hand and nail care. Because your hands are something which are highly visible, probably you know, almost as much so as your face, because much of the year, your body, your legs, everything else is covered by your clothing. But your hands, they're always out there. And if you work in a profession, I don't know, say you're a mechanic or a gardener, where your hands are taking a beating on a daily basis, you know, it's important to spend some time looking after those things which are so visible to other people. And you know, they're, they're important to stay in shape because if you have grubby fingernails and ingrained filth or grease in your hands, it's not attractive. It's not a good look, but it doesn't have to be difficult, does it? Because you know, whatever your job is, you can take preventative activity. You can, if you are a, a mechanic these days, you can wear some form of glove. Uh, a latex glove or a non-latex version of glove stops any of that, uh, that grease or harmful chemicals, as they can be, getting onto your skin, damaging it, burning it, causing aggravation. If you can't wear gloves because you need that level of manual dexterity for the fingers, perhaps applying a barrier cream at the beginning of the day to make sure that your hands have at least a chemical barrier so that those harmful things don't cause them, you know, um, negative impact on your skin. Otherwise, you know, if, you, uh, if you're just after general hand uh, care sort of thing I do, yes, if my hands get dirty, I absolutely scrub them with a brush, but it's important that if you're gonna be, you know, exfoliating the skin on your hands like that, you need to lavish some attention on your hands as well. So applying something like a, a hand cream or a moisturizer in the evening, I tend to do it. I keep a little bottle by the side of where I sit at night in my lounge. I'll slip it onto the hands and it will, you know, it's just a natural process. I moisturize my hands as I'm watching the TV. My wife's doing it with her hands, but mine take a lot less attention, I can assure you. So taking a general overview of the hands, making sure they're in good shape, keeping the nails scrubbed, keeping the cuticles well looked after, fingernails trimmed. And believe me, gents, this is no hardship when you think of the effort that women go to, you know, going to a nail bar, spending all that money just to get nails which are, you know, look like a griffin's talons sometimes. So look after your hands because your hands are like a flag. They, they say a lot about you. Dirty, grubby, filthy hands are not a good look. It's not gonna be uh, something that you would want to be remembered for. Okay, my tip number three is quite simply very closely related to the last one of hand care and that skin care. Because your skin is the largest organ in the human body and it plays the biggest part in deciding whether you look good. So whether you look uh, young or old for your age, whether you look well, vibrant and healthy, or whether you look ill. 
uh, and certainly it'll determine whether you look clean or grimy. So looking after the skin is an important thing to do. Worth spending time at, even though if it seems unmanly. But there are some tips that you need to know to make that skin journey something that you can easily achieve. The first thing is to understand your skin. Learn how it works, because no two people's skins are the same, all right? We've all got different chemical composition. So some people might have, you know, an acidic skin or an alkaline skin. So different moisturizers and skincare products are not gonna work equally for you. My advice is if you're out one day with a wife or out on your own, pop into one of those fancy skincare boutiques you'll find in big cities and ask the assistant, what type of skin have I got? because I'm looking to um, build some products into my, re my regime. They will see this as a sales opportunity, and for sure, they will absolutely um, discover for you what type of skin you've got and make some recommendations. And then once you know, you're in a far better position to purchase the right products that will work for you. Now on a basic level, one of the things I do is apply moisturizer to the skin. It keeps the skin looking plump and healthy and well hydrated. For me, twice a day, is my normal so in the morning i get up i have a shave i will apply a moisturizer after i've shaved not just where i've shaved but all over my face and in the evening after i have my final shower of the day i will again apply a moisturizer which will make sure anything i've been through that day the the sort of trials and tribulations my day has thrown at me if i've been in the city and i've been in a polluted air environment whether i've been out exercising and i've had salty sweat running through my pores I always make sure my skin is taken care of by applying a moisturizer without fail. Now, along with that moisturizer, I use a facial scrub, so an exfoliant. I'll do that about two or three times a week. It takes away the dead skin cells and certainly makes your skin feel uh, much better, much fresher. It's, it makes me feel the cleanest I could ever be. And also remember, don't just use normal bar soap on your face. This is sensitive skin. It can easily dry out or become oily if you use products which are not ideal for that part of your body. So I use um, a specialist facial soap. Um, there are all different types of ones out there on the market. I wouldn't presume to suggest that you try one over another, but go on your own journey. Find out what sort of skin you've got and what's the best soap to use for your skin composition. And one final piece of advice, gents, and that is use sun cream throughout the year all right because in the summertime you know when the, the uv light those terrible laser rays that the sun kicks out remember they can destroy skin cells faster than anything and the way to protect against it is using a uv sunscreen so make sure if you're going out for the day trekking or even just going into the city and you know you're going to be out in the sun apply some sunscreen it will certainly, of all the things I've suggested, keep you looking young and vibrant the longest. Okay chaps, now this is a very important one and it's very often overlooked by many people and that is your mental self-care, all right? Because it's all well and good having a great complexion and sparkling cuticles that we've talked about already, but if your mind is shot, you can't do anything. It's not gonna be a happy life for you. So looking after your mental well-being, your mental hygiene as you go through life is an ongoing and perpetual activity which we all have to undertake. It's really important to remember that it doesn't matter how, how tough and hard you are, at some point you are more likely going to suffer with mental ill health. You know, you're gonna have grief in your life, you're gonna lose a job, you're gonna have a divorce or a relationship build up. Something is going to happen which is gonna throw you off kilter and this is likely to propel you into a period of mental instability and ill health. So we're, it's very important that we stay on top of our mental game. And for me, that means I often ask myself two questions quite often to make sure that I'm on an even keel. And that will determine the things that I do to keep myself well and mentally healthy. Now, the first question I often ask myself to make sure I'm on the straight and narrow with the mind is, 
Am I doing the things that are stimulating and healthy that keeps my mind growing and in a good mental condition? Things like reading, things like um, you know seeking new information. I'm always you know wanting to learn more, to be educated. I've often got a topic that I'm reading up on. Um, I love listening to biographies of other people who've gone on their life journey to see what snippets I can learn and bring into my life. Am I enjoying? my hobbies? Have I got an interest in something? Am I enjoying talking to people, meeting people and furthering my my journey through life? And if the answer is no, often it's a case I'm perhaps starting to retract into myself, that I'm not um, seeking opportunities to continue building my friendships and you know spending time on the things that I like to do. This for me is often a sign that something is not right. And the second question I often ask myself on this topic is, am I being proactive about my mental hygiene? And by that, I mean, am I taking enough exercise? Because for me, exercise and mental wellness pretty much go hand in hand. If I'm taking exercise, I normally feel mentally well. Am I sleeping properly? If I'm not sleeping right, again, throws me off kilter, often signals there's something not right in my life. Am I eating properly? You know, if, I'm, if I find that I'm eating or drinking the things that I know are not too good for me, particularly alcohol, or I'm eating lots of poor quality food, for me, it's a sign I've lost interest in something. And again, it can be a bit of a red flag. Now, if I answer no to any of those two questions and the various facets within those questions, I know I've got to do something. I've got to be a bit more proactive than leaning back and hoping life is going to be just tickety-boo. And I tend to do things like, you know, consciously, even though I don't want to, taking exercise. Consciously, even though I don't want to often, doing some journaling. Because for me, I know when I capture my thoughts in the written form, it helps me formulate an idea of what's going on in my life, maybe what's gone wrong, and then what I can do to get it back on track. So journaling for me, a big up. And of course, the one thing that you can do if you need to is seek help if you need it, right? This is nothing to be ashamed of, nothing to be worried about. In my previous job, I was exposed to a great deal of trauma and what could have been very damaging experiences. And as a consequence, my employer provided for people like myself uh, in the type of job I was in to see a psychiatrist um, twice a year to have a conversation with a mental health care professional who would download the information that we had seen. It was an opportunity to have that frank conversation with somebody who's outside our peer group, outside our family group, yet they understand the situations we found ourselves in. You'd be amazed. It worked wonders for me and it helped me maintain my mental hygiene. So if you want to stay on top of your game, Regardless of what you do, having a healthy inner dialogue is a really important route to the destination of mental health. So, Okay, let's talk about a simple one after that more complex one, and that is mouth care. Because the last thing you want to do if you need to get up close and personal with people, be they co-workers, professionals in your life or loved ones, you don't want to have bad breath, you don't want to have bad teeth. So the obvious things to do are clearly maintain a relationship with your dentist. Know your dentist by name and you won't go far wrong. And for me, twice a year, I go and see the dentist and then in between if I need to, if I've got any problems. Never neglect the relationship with your dentist. They're a big friend. They can cause you or stop you being caused a lot of pain, but also make sure that your pearly whites are in good order. Now, clearly, brush your teeth at least twice a day. For me, I brush my teeth after every meal when I have the ability. So if I'm at home, working from home, or if I'm in the office, keep a toothbrush in my locker and I make sure I clean my gnashes after every meal. Also, you can floss, you can use mouthwash too. Here's a little tip for you though. Don't use mouthwash just after you've cleaned your teeth. Because if you're using a fluoride toothpaste, it's far better to leave the residue of that toothpaste on your teeth doing its job than flushing it away using a mouthwash immediately after you've cleaned your teeth. So clean your teeth, then use a mouthwash a little bit later, perhaps in between your mouth cleaning sessions. Mouthwash, very good. But the other thing you can do, simple things, drink lots of water. You know, keep your body hydrated, keep the mouth flushed with fluid as often as you can. It'll keep you healthy and it'll keep the mouth and teeth 
free of those bacteria as well which cause bad breath and over time will deteriorate your, the enamel of your teeth. Now this is of course really important if you're a fan of uh, spicy foods or malodorous foods. And what do I mean? Things like garlic and uh, you know things like that. So if you are somebody who enjoys that type of food, and let's be honest, most of us do, you know, you need to be quite proactive about how you look after your mouth uh, and your breath, particularly after you eat that big steaming curry. If you're going to be sat next to somebody in a small office, or you're going for a job interview, or something of that nature. So proactive mouth care is going to be the winner if you want to make sure you ring the bell with your pearly white teeth. Okay chaps, we're doing well. My last tip for you is social self-care. This is a really important thing that us human beings have to work on to make sure that we're in good shape at any time. Because human beings, we are social animals. You know, we like to group together. We find comfort in the presence of other humans. And if we're not looking after our social self-care, we are going to suffer in other parts of our life. Now, social self-care, well, well, you know, if you don't do it, loneliness and isolation have been proved through research to have a really detrimental effect on your lifespan and the quality of life while you're around. So it's really important that you put the time in. So let's say, for instance, you move to a new town and you don't know anybody, or you move to a new job and you lose those contacts that you've been in touch with for a long time. You have to work hard. Sometimes it's really difficult to push yourself out there if you're not one of those socially gregarious individuals who can just fit into a room full of people. I'm not. Right? I've got to push myself sometimes to accept those dinner invitations or those invitations to meet with co-workers for drinks because that's, those are the building blocks to friendships. Yes, you don't want to, but go to the work's Christmas party or go to Fred's retirement do because it will bring you into contact with your co-workers they'll have a drink with you you'll find out something about them you may find out that you have shared interests you have the same hobbies and you can go along with them to that book club that you've always you know wanted to break into or that they enjoy sea angling and you can go fishing together for marlin off the coast or whatever you want to do but you won't discover you have those joint interests if you don't make that social time. So never be afraid to say yes to an invitation and work hard on maintaining your social self-care. Now the other thing that you need to think about when you're working on social self-care is that it's up to you too. To maintain friendships and relationships, you've got to put the effort in. So yeah, you know, you may not be comfortable inviting strangers to your home, but by all means, occasionally, have an annual uh, backyard barbecue. Get your friends round, get the family round, uh, you know, and, and throw it all to the wind. Get a nice steak for everybody, and everybody sit down, have a few drinks, build those relationships. And when it comes to family, those distant family members you only see at holidays and things, invite them round the house for a Sunday dinner, for an Easter meal, uh, for a holiday visit. Or, you know, make sure that you're putting the mileage in, because if you are, these things will pay back to you. You'll be invited to other people's homes and doors will be thrown open. Your social self-care will absolutely write checks that you can cash in the future for your health and well-being. So there we go, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this little sojourn through the spring woodland with me whilst I sort of get ready for a trip to my hut, which is coming up soon, which you will see the video for and I hope my tips on social and other types of self-care have been beneficial to you. There is nothing more valuable in your life than investing in yourself. I assure you nobody else is going to do it other than possibly your mother and father but it is up to you to make all those things happen which will ensure that your life is profitable, enjoyable, and something at the end of your journey you can look back on with satisfaction. So, if you have enjoyed today's video, of course I would encourage you to give the video a thumbs up. And if you like the work we do here and you'd like to see more, don't forget, click the red button, you know the drill, subscribe. If you'd like to practically support the channel, of course you can by clicking the buy me a coffee link in the show notes below and that will be very helpful too. So until the next time, 
chaps, look after yourselves. Make sure you're doing all that you can to stay the very best version of yourself. And I will see you again very soon. <laughs>